we are trying to make a tool, not just any tool. We are trying to make the tool. Now, what is a tool? A tool is something that lets you do something. What, therefore, would be the ultimate tool?
I don't know if you've noticed, but we kind of have this sense of quality. We want good music, we want good art, we want quality t-shirts, we want to put things out when they're ready. Um, yeah, I know, sore subject. Um, okay, thank you. Just to jump to that, that burning question, um, you know, when's the record coming out? Um, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. We, we um, a year ago this month, uh, the four of us met uh, at a place called Dave's Place in L.A. It's a little um, rundown but very cool vibed uh, studio in the valley. Just to see where we're at, we were about 70% there and um, we continue to work on stuff and um, uh, we broke from that and on and off continued to uh, get to the finish line. And just before we came here, um, just over a month, we were at another studio. And what we usually do is uh, we get the drums because it's just, it doesn't work with our band to like record the guitars and then get the drums. You have to build off the drums. Dan has such an eclectic yeah. set. Yeah. So it just, it, that's what really makes, that's the secret to our record is just, you know, kind of going into a big room, recording the drums. And the last two times, like it's usually, you know, Maynard, me and Justin are all in separate rooms, but the last two times Justin was, he was like, I want to be in there with Danny. So he was in there with Dan and he had a, his setup and then he has another setup in a room for separation. Uh, we're going to move to another studio and the rest of us will hit it hard. And then we'll figure out how to, you know, do that propaganda thing we do and we'll get it out to you guys. We love Joe. And Joe is a guitar guy, but he's also like a music guy. Like the guy is just obsessed. And he just is a really good listener. And um, so he's a drum guy, a bass guy, a vocal guy. And I think his work is, speaks for itself. Um, we're, we're approaching it the same way we, we have for a long time. So we self-produce. And, uh, and, and also in the old days, I think we uh, used to like with working with a different engineer. And that's someone who captures what you're doing and then bring in a different mixer someone who you know balances all the music um, and thought that was a really good idea but I I think we found that having the same guy do it he can set it up like having wet blankets on your speaker and pulling them off and just going oh my gosh a lot of the songs on the new record are in seven um, it's pretty incredible well I think we talked about what what, what are some of our you know, music we listen to is, but uh, um, for me personally, when we're recording an album and when we're writing, leading up to recording it, I'm just listening to that music. I'm just listening over and over again to the tracks. So what we do is we uh, record a tape and we bounce that warm analog sound to digital and mix it up. I get ideas all the time, you know, often when I'm just walking around outside and uh, the most important thing is, if you think it's great, is to remember it the next day, you know, especially if it's in a weird time signature. It's like you either have to, you got to rush home and find a way of tapping it out and getting it or record it on your phone. If, uh, but I find it much cooler if you actually embed it in your brain um, before you go to sleep. That's always the key with me. And if it's gone in the morning, it's gone. It's not that good. You know what I mean? Actually, when we did go in the studio recording this record, I actually suggested to Barisi, though, that to maybe try out doing the 442 thing. And he, um, he was horrified because <laughs> everything in the studio is all calibrated to 440. And it would have been, a, I think it would have taken a, it would have been a big commitment and a kind of a nightmare to do it. So, yeah, basically, uh, uh, the three of us, at some point, you know, get together and start write, writing and we bring in riffs. Like I'm the guy that like, wants to work very simple and kind of get where we're going and then start tricking out stuff and, and, and getting into it. And Dan, Justin like to like just right off the bat, like just go for it. And neither one of us is wrong. We get together, we jam, we have a Pro Tools recording and uh, all digital. And what we do is we work something out on a, like a dry erase board and 
we hit record. And if it sucks, we erase it. And if it's good, we keep it. And usually we get about seven or 14 jams. And at the end of practice, we make CDs for each other. And then we go home and listen to it in the car and then not worry about what we're playing. You know, just hear it like you would hear it. So we just can feel it, you know. And then next day, come in with, you know, ideas to keep moving on. So on the, on the new record, and Dan's drums are done, as we said, uh, he um, is very talented on his module synthesizer. And uh, he gets something kind of cooking and plays along with it. And he did that as a segue. I, I, really, I really appreciate the support tonight. I've heard people yelling it out. We have this thing going, you know, it's not good when it's done. It's done when it's good. Yeah.